Welcome back to another hotel review. I'm your hotel critic, Caleb Kent. Vlogger, actor, content creator, host of the Caleb Kent podcast, and travel enthusiast. And in today's video, I will be reviewing Disney's Wilderness Lodge. I got to stay at this property the second half of February, and here are my thoughts. Before we get started, here are some fun facts about the property. It has 728 rooms, it has 8 floors of lodgepole pine imported from Oregon, and was the first Disney World Resort to have its own mascot, which is a brown bear, because what else would it be? Also, before I start off my thoughts on the place, I want to point out that there are two properties that are a part of this resort, called Boulder Ridge Villas and Copper Creek Villas and Cabins. They are in fact very nice, judging by the looks of it, but I won't be speaking on behalf of them in this video here. But I do plan to stay there at some point. Some point. The theme of the property is inspired by turn of the century lodges from notable national parks of the western side of the US. It's not hard to take in the atmosphere of the wilderness and witness the images to the natural beauty of national parks. The lodge is modeled after multiple national park hotels, including the Old Faithful Inn at Yellowstone National Park. And my goodness gracious, is this resort insanely well done. Everywhere you look when you are here, there is not a dull sight that you will see. It was by far one of the best properties I've ever stayed at in my life. Yes, the attention to detail is outstanding and it looks good, but it also hits close to home for me. For those that don't know, I grew up in Northern California and I lived about an hour and a half away from South Lake Tahoe, which is where I took the most vacations growing up. Lake Tahoe is one of the most beautiful destinations I've ever known, and it's on my top 5 California vacation spots growing up video if you wish to check out my full in-depth thoughts on it. It might be a bit boring to watch now that we watched it though. Point is, Lake Tahoe will always be a part of me and this entire resort has so many attributes that brought back memories from home and reminded me of Lake Tahoe. And if you're asking yourself why this property feels familiar, well, it's because it's quite similar to Disney's Grand Californian Hotel and Spa, located in Disneyland Resort in Anaheim, California. I've stayed there before, but it's been a bit. I'll go back one day and do a review, but that will most likely not be for a while. Anyway, the lodge looks absolutely astonishing and, in my opinion, is built very immaculately. When you arrive at the front, you'll notice the impressively well done exterior. You haven't seen the best part yet and already you know it will be a good stay. But as soon as you step your way into the lobby, you will be stunned at the sheer grand scale of the whole theme. The lobby is this huge atrium with tons of woodwork, chandeliers, furniture, and totem poles that actually took 6 months to carve for this place. This is undoubtedly on my list for the best lobbies for the hotels I've stayed at so far. I recommend going up on the upper levels just to check out the viewpoints of the lobby and the exterior. The level of quantity and quality of the architecture for this place is unbelievably insane. The lobby alone makes me want to come back for another stay. Even the gift shop is lodge based. Seriously, Disney really did their homework here. The tiniest details here really make the biggest influence in your experience to be a great one. It's completely grand and is far, far away from the word bland. One of the sickest parts about this lodge is the hot springs with a bridge in the lobby. And if that's not cool enough for you, just wait until you see this. The hot springs inside the lobby leads to a river outside for the exterior of the lodge, which then leads to a rapid, then a waterfall, which is by far one of the most beautifully picturesque things here at this resort. Don't forget to snap a picture of it. The waterfall then leads to a river that goes into the freaking pool. And may I just say, this is one of the best pools I've seen at a Disney resort. Not only is there a water slide, but it's got a good shape, design, and the surroundings with the lake and lodge make it all the more luxurious and immersive. Speaking of the building, the exterior for the lodge is just as good as the interior. To say that the lodge looks amazing all around would be a huge understatement. Everything from the stonework to the woodwork is phenomenal, and you can't help but admire it. The scale and size of it all is mesmerizing and completely captivating. And the scenery for the resort is amazing with all the trees, bushes, rocks, and of course, the water. Back to the water, actually. The pool continues the river adventure from the lobby by leading into another river that ends up into Bay Lake. It's impressive how much thought was put into this visually appealing feature for the lodge. Whoever thought of the idea of this for this resort is a certified genius to me. Sorry, I just love water when it comes to nature. Back to the exterior. There's also hot spring scenery right by Bay Lake, which actually shoots up water every hour. I just happened to not be there while filming. 
And finally, there's a pathway built over the lake, and it's pretty nice. I gotta say, this is one of the most impressive exteriors I've seen for a hotel, and I can't think of a detail that Disney didn't spare for this lodge. There are a few options with dining here at the lodge. You have your mobile order restaurant called Roaring Fork with a few options that you won't find everywhere else. And there's also outside seating with views of this gorgeous resort. Inside the lobby is Whispering Canyon Cafe, which I got to experience and it was a pretty good place to dine at, and it looks amazing around. At the left hallway portion of the lobby is a bar called Territory Lounge, which I didn't get to experience since I'm not 21 yet, but I trust that it's good based on the pictures at least. Right by the lounge is a Snow White character restaurant called Storybook Dining, which is quite expensive, so I didn't feel the need to try it out for what it's worth. Might try again next time. And finally, right by Bay Lake and the Hot Springs is a restaurant called Geyser Point Bar and Grill. I'm kinda sad I didn't know about this place until filming because I would have tried to dine here had I known about it. It's not absurdly expensive for Disney, it's got scenic views of the resort and lake, and it just looks like a good time. If all those options I listed aren't what you were looking for, then Disney Springs has got a variety of other options to pick. The Lodge is located in the Magic Kingdom area, but it's hidden off quite a bit. You can see it at viewpoints from the monorail, for example, but the location for the Lodge is very secluded. But I would argue that it adds to the theme. Just like all the other Disney World resorts, the property offers bus transportation to take to the theme parks and Disney Springs. But one thing that is very convenient about this property is that they have resort launches to take you to Disney's Magic Kingdom and back. And just like with the Disney Springs water taxi services, it feels like a whole nature tour to take the resort launch. Even if you aren't using it to go to the park, I'd recommend taking advantage of this service that is offered. You get good views of the water and the overall environment of the Magic Kingdom area, as well as the cabins. Disney's Grand Floridian Resort and Spa and Disney's Polynesian Village Resort also have this service, but it's not as adventurous as this service is. Now, from what we've seen from the exterior and lobby, are the rooms pretty nice? You bet that they are. The room felt like a mix of the rooms at Disney's Grand Californian Hotel and Spa and Lake Tahoe, but if we're talking about how nice the rooms here are, then it's pretty nice. Everything about the room screams luxury in a totally lodge type of fashion. Different shades of wood designs, fancy lighting features, forest attributes all around, a very nice background for the beds, and of course towels folded on the bed to shape a Mickey head. There's also two shower heads to use in the shower, so that's neat. Not to mention the balcony. It's important to note that most of the balconies for the rooms here are more open. The room I got was situated on the stonework, so it was a bit more obstructed, but it still made for a great view for me with the lake and trees, as well as the launch for Magic Kingdom. No matter where you look around the room, you feel relaxed and super immersed into the lodge theme this resort strives for. This is undoubtedly one of those rooms at Disney that you look forward to instead of being like, meh. Good job with yet another one, Disney. Other than this resort being quite expensive, there are no cons that I found anywhere during my stay to point out. I do just want to say that the lodge is a bit secluded. Like I pointed out earlier, it gives the immersion of the theme, but it feels like it's outside the magic of the parks a little bit. These three properties in the Magic Kingdom area keep you in the magic more due to its location and visibility of the park, whereas this resort is more reserved. This isn't really a con at all, but rather something to take note of, so you, as the viewer, will be aware of that, so you can decide if you want to stay inside the magic of the park, if that is important to you when booking a property here. I personally very much like being in the magic of the theme parks, but I also know that experience is also key. So if the secluded part isn't a big deal, then there's nothing to worry about with this location. And plus, there are rooms with partial views of the fireworks from Magic Kingdom. The only true con about my stay was that it wasn't long enough, but that's clearly on the resort, as they should have booked me another night there free of charge because I'm a critic and therefore above everyone else. But seriously, I enjoyed my stay here very much. In conclusion, if you are looking for a Disney World property with theming, a lot of attention to detail, luxury, beauty on the inside and out, and just a good experience in general, this place is without a doubt an amazing choice. But if you are on a lower budget or really prioritize being in the heart of the theme parks, then I'd say choose a different option. Besides the fact that this lodge was nostalgic for me, this is just a great resort to stay at. It was such a shame I only did one night here, but optimistically speaking here, just like that lyric by Morgan Wallen, 
Something's telling me this ain't over yet. No way it was our last night. I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say that I think this lodge is pretty underrated here at Disney World. If you ever stay here, please take in every moment, detail, and feature that you find here deeply. It's such a beautiful place to stay at, and I can only imagine what the villas and cabins here are like. I got some more checking off to do for my list of resorts here at Disney World, but just like the song, No way it was our last night. The lobby, exterior work, and rooms combined made an excellent stay for me to come back. And thank you, Disney, for making a property that brought back vibes of home to me here in Florida. And so, after everything I've said, Disney's Wilderness Lodge gets a final score of 95 out of 100. Thank you for watching this hotel review, and I will see you in the next video. Over and out, on to the outro. Hey, thank you so much for watching this video. If you want to go check out some other videos that I have made, you're just one click on the channel icon away from doing so. If you want to find me on social media, I'm on Instagram, TikTok, and Snapchat. They're listed right up. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment, and share if you wish to do so. And if you are or will be a returning viewer, I will see you in the next video. Have an amazing day. Thank you.